welcome to Arrow for Passing. Glad you can join me today. This is a video for the hunt for coyote number eight, a failed attempt. So November 30th, the worker dumped the stillborn calf and then the farmer covered the body with the dirt and compost. This was a typical method of disposing. On December 1st, you can see a farm cat in the area. The coyote might be hunting the cats as well. On December 5th, another dead calf was dumped on the pile. Again, the farmer add more dirt on top to cover up the body. So the coyotes frequent this area a lot. On December 9th at 1.21, you can see a coyote showed up. This one has a damaged tail. And you can see in the background, the body had been unearthed already. Uh, Our city has been feeding on it. So you can see they like to stay on top on the concrete barrier. So 10 minutes later, it showed up. It continued to patrol the area. Most of the calf was eaten already. And my truck has a two minutes interval, so some images were not recorded. Fifteen minutes later, a second coyote showed up. You can see this one has the full tail. They were definitely uh, feeding together and uh, traveling together, so the other one must be nearby on the lookout. However, my trail can never capture them together. Again, it hopped up on the ledge here. Seems like this was a pattern that they uh, jump on here and patrol the area. So I need, definitely need to make some notes on it. Time to plan my hunt. December 11th, this was the night before the hunt. You can see the damaged tail showed up about 3.35 a.m. Strangely, my trial cam never captured them feeding together. This was definitely a foreshadowing, as you will find out later. Farmer was checking the compost area and he texted me that uh, the coyote had been very active. So I told him I would come by tomorrow night, set up and give it a go. Here's the night of the hunt, December 12th. So I arrived about 8.45 p.m. to set up at the loft. I was only able to take one test shot and my point of impact was about half inch higher. So I reminded myself to aim a little bit lower when I get a chance to shoot. At 11.08 p.m. I saw some ducks in the field and they usually fly out when the coyote showed up. So I listened to them carefully for any disturbance. Here I could scan the field for any activity, maybe hoping to see some coyotes coming in. My trail cam located about 20 feet from the target area. So I watched it carefully to see any red light pop on. However, it never lit up when the coyote arrived. I'm still puzzled by it, malfunction perhaps. Here okay, I was just scanning the area to make sure my night vision scope was uh, working properly. Notice the two white dots on the concrete. I aimed at the bottom one and the top one was the point of impact. It was half inch higher. Later on at 11.48 p.m. I saw a couple of ducks walking through and I was able to see them through the moonlight. They were just walking through the feed area. So I guess no coyote presence at the moment. They just stroll along without any hurry. They would alert me if the coyotes were around. 12.20 a.m. I saw a coyote in the middle of the field so I quickly got to my gun and turned on my night vision. Did a quick scan and I found it standing right there. So now my heart rate began to escalate. After four hours of waiting in the dark, I couldn't believe my luck to be able to encounter one tonight. I tried to calm my nerve, taking in deep breaths. That was my chance to tag another one. I didn't know what the exact distance was, for I didn't get a chance to arrange it earlier. I didn't want to risk injuring it, so I decided to wait and observe it. I knew it was coming in, so I waited. It was going to go to the pit for food anyway. It found something to eat. I wasn't sure what that was. So this was a coyote with a bushy tail. I wonder if the other coyote was nearby, as they seem to travel in pair. I zoomed in for a closer look. It was a nice thick coat. I was getting excited at the possibility of tagging this one. Too bad I didn't have a razor rangefinder with this part 7 s I would have taken a shot otherwise. However, my point of aim was set at 17 yards. I didn't want to guess what my hole was. Besides, my mind wasn't as sharp as focus, sitting in a dark, cold night for four hours. 
caused me not to think straight. And I had forgotten about the half inch hole under adjustment anyway. As you can see, it was coming closer to the target area. Lots of movement here. No clear shot in my opinion. Here it comes. It was at the concrete barrier now. Time to get ready for a shot. Here I could hear my heartbeat pounding through my jacket. My fingers start to twitch. I begin to feel more anxious and excited at the same time. I need to compose myself. The concrete barrier blocked my view. I wasn't sure if this coyote would stick around long. So I told myself to take a shot if it's had to come into view. The distance should be about 18 or 20 yards away. However, no clear shot here. So I kept my finger off the trigger, did not want to squeeze off a shot accidentally. I can only watch helplessly, hoping that it's going to come out. Yep, I can't see it anymore. So the suspense was killing me. I began to panic that I couldn't find it. Not sure if he left or what's happening with it. Where did it go? So I just panicked around and tried to find it. As you can see, the trial cam still didn't come on. So I scanned back and forth, wondering did it run off? So hard to see in the dark like this. But there it is, I saw his ears, so I knew it was still there. I was getting impatient now, for I didn't want to miss this golden opportunity to tag my coyote at number 8 for this year. I panned back and forth, hoping to spot it. Nothing. I was checking the field to see if the other coyote was around. Couldn't see it either. Where did it go? Frustrating, because I know it was there, but I couldn't see it. There it is. Saw so Zia peeking up. Yep, it's still there. So now I was digging up the dirt, looking for the dead calf. Too bad the compass wasn't high enough, unlike the situation with Coyote number 7, where I could see the whole profile of the Coyote. Lucky him, unlucky me, I guess. All this shows didn't help my current mental state. I was anxious and desperate. A recipe for failure, I guess. I was uncertain whether it would stay or not. Any noise could have scared it away in a flash. Okay, looks like it was feeding. I told myself I can do this. I got this. I've done this before. Just waiting for the head to pop up now. So I zoom in a little bit. Maybe now? Nope. I almost squeeze off a shot. Come on, come on. As you can see here, if he was higher, I would have a clear shot to the head. My finger began to twitch again. My anticipation was getting worse. Where I get the chance to shoot? There? Nope. Maybe there? This was getting worse by the second. I told myself to take the shot when the head pops up again. It was now or never. I 
Clay was coming up. So the anticipation is driving that. There we go. It's moving higher and higher. Just a little bit more, please. Nope, not yet. I think we want to hit the concrete. There, coming up higher. Here we go. He had no idea was there. Just a little bit more. Come on. Do it now. I squeeze off the shot. It looks like I tagged it in the back of the head. Look like a clean hit. I couldn't see anything. I frantically pan around, try to see a body. I honestly thought I got it, but I wasn't sure. Let's have another look. In slow-mo, it turned to the right and down just because of the shot. I didn't see any ricochet off the concrete. That's why I thought I got it. You can see the tail, it ran off to the left. Yep, I missed. So I was disappointed not to see the body laying there. I was scanning the area desperately, hoping to see it lying down somewhere dead. Sunken feeling realized that uh, I missed the shot. I couldn't believe what just happened. This coyote was lucky. Because of my poor shot, perhaps. And the concrete bear was in the way. So my hunt for coyote number eight continues.